Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's take on The Sound of Freedom. Yes, I just got back from it. Had some dinner, had some time to, to think about it. A uh, very interesting film. We're going to do, of course, my non-spoiler review. And then we're going to get into deep, deep spoilers for you screenwriters out there. Uh, so let's get into it. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Thanks for checking out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 11. Soon to be 12. At Amazon.com. All right. So is this living up to the hype? Yeah. It's really good. Um, it is, of course... Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to censor myself a little bit because it is YouTube. It is a trafficking movie. Little people trafficking movie, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, if you haven't heard about it. And um, it's about the, based on the true story of Tim Ballard, who was an agent for the DHS. And I didn't realize the DHS was doing this kind of operation. I would have thought this would have been FBI or uh, even CIA, since it's overseas, but apparently our alphabet agencies get to do whatever the F they want. But nevertheless, <laughs> he was fighting this, and um, uh, it's, it's a very emotional movie, I'll say that. Now, I was very reluctant to go see it because I don't like sad movies in general because I get upset, and the movie... <laughs> The movie really did upset me, in parts. But, um, that being said, and I'm sure uh, most people, I mean, I, I heard people getting upset in the movie theater, but it does end on a hopeful note, and uh, it's, uh, it's really three, like, movies. It's like, it's like an episode of SVU without the court case. Uh, and it starts with like one criminal, then a second group of criminals, and then kind of a third group of criminals that they go after. So I assume this telescopes a lot of time in Ballard's career and probably probably takes some liberties. But uh, Jim Caviezel uh, is really good. He's very stoic and um, he's very sort of functional. In the movie, the way he plays it, he's not trying to, you know, he's not trying to act. Let's say he he he's just trying to do his job. You want to get down, Joan? Already? Thanks. Thanks for ruining the take. Um, the nice thing about the movie is there's a real nuance to it, and that's really been missing from Hollywood movies today. No nuance. So, when you see a scene of a poor little girl who's trapped in a room by herself and then an older man comes in and he's drunk and he's carrying whiskey and then he shuts the door and then he closes the curtains. You don't have to hear or see anything else. You know what happens in this movie. And that kind of nuance, um, first off, it's not exploitive. I, I really didn't want to hear screams or sounds after that. That would have been too much. I mean, it, it's... It's such a um, hot button issue. So I appreciated the nuance. That was enough. Like everything in this movie is just enough to get you to the next point. And that's what I said the other day about what really would have helped some of these big budget movies is just to slash their budgets because it would force the filmmakers, hopefully, to think a little more and do things like that every once in a while. I mean, you don't have to do it every time. You know, this movie could have easily been full of shootouts, and it just wasn't. Um, you know, the action's very understated. And you might say, well, they didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, but it's not needed for this movie. They did what was needed. Um, there's a real arc here for not so much the characters, but the, the issue. It, it, it's kind of an issue-based movie. Yeah, there's an arc for Cavazelli and the kids and uh, the father of the kids. But really, it's more about the bigger issue. And uh, I think it's portrayed with a lot of uh, uh, craft. And um, 
I think you'll like it. You know, I mean, I mean, you're not going to like the subject matter, but you're going to like the, you know, it's a movie you could see about a terrible thing, but you can kind of be like, I'm glad I saw this movie because you kind of know more after you've seen it. And, um, you know, the performances are rock solid. The standout for me was the ex-cartel guy. He had a really great character arc and good performance. Really good performance for him. The kids are amazing in it. Um, you know, everybody's uh, really good. Uh, Cabezel's great. He's, he's good. He's totally solid. Everybody's solid in the movie. Um, you know, uh, the... the uh, you know, it's you get to go to a lot of places. That's for sure. I mean, it's a lot of jungle scenes, but um, that part of it really sort of opened it up for me. It's such an international issue. So, uh, one thing you want to do if you do go see the movie, excuse me, is wait. There's a special message in the movie. Caviezel comes out and uh, basically, you know, pulls a Tom Cruise. Thanks everybody for coming. And then talks about the issue and how it's really bigger than him or the movie. And what he'd like to do is make the movie, like he compares it to Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was a book that Lincoln said helped end slavery. He wants this movie to help end the trafficking. And it very well could. It's doing very well. Um, I don't think it'll beat Mission Impossible. But I did check Monday's numbers and it did beat everything. It was number one on Monday. Um, Tuesday, it's number two, but it's up against Mission Impossible that literally just opened. So, um, but it's still beating everything else. And um, the thing about it, oops, the thing about it is, um, you know, Caviezel does have, I, at first I thought, oh, it's going to be a message. They're going to ask me to donate. And then, no, he was he was really uh, well spoken about the issue, and um, they set up a thing where you could like buy a ticket for another person. But I mean, for me, I went in uh, you know matinee on a Wednesday, and uh, I got in for le less than eight bucks. So I mean, get off your wallet, go go see the damn movie, support it, um, and look. I went to a matinee two o'clock on a Wednesday, and the place was half full. That's pretty good for a 2 o'clock on a Wednesday. I'm like, what are all these people here for? I had to wait in line to get the damn ticket. I thought I'd be the only one in the damn theater. And that's normally, and I tend to go to movies at 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, by the way. Um, so that's um, showing that the movie has legs. And um, I think it sends a message, too. You know, the mainstream media is dumping on this movie for some insane reason. Um, I, I could, I could go into why I think that's the case, but I don't want to say that on YouTube, but, um, you know, this is, this could send a message just by people going to see it. And you might say, oh, that's Caviezel selling this movie. Yeah, but it's true. I mean, it's still true. I, I don't think this is a, it doesn't feel like a cynical ploy just to sell a movie. Um, especially the way they handled the issue in the movie. So, go see Sound of Freedom. Uh, I think you'll like it. It is a good crime movie in general. And, um, you know, it moves well. It's it's a little over two hours. Didn't feel, didn't feel long to me, and that's a good sign. It was well-paced, well-acted. Uh, yeah. Thumbs up. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Okay, that concludes my non-spoiler review. Now I'm going to get into the spoilers, what actually happens in the three acts. So go see Sound of Freedom uh, playing in your local theaters now. Okay, so spoilers. Uh, first act. It's really three different crimes. The first act, he's hunting down the... Um, again, I'm trying not to get flagged on YouTube the bad guys who do poor, bad things to children and collect their pictures. So the guy he's after is one of these guys who tries to justify it in some way. He's got a book and uh, probably a website somewhere. 
and um, so they have to take him down as he's committing the act and they're monitoring his computer use and he is sending them terrible pictures and they catch him before he can uh, uh, stop sending the terrible pictures so they get him on in jail and one of his buddies and this is in the trailer says something like you know after the arrest um, you know how many guys have we caught and he said 200 288 and how many kids have we saved and it's just kind of like oh yeah they're all overseas like we never get to save those and um, you know sad um, and that's true it's all happening overseas and the pictures are coming here so Caviezel uses his um, and this is what cops do uh, he works the suspect he he doesn't like beat him up like Batman he takes him aside and says oh I'm one of you and it's kind of a subtle scene because at first I thought Caviezel was going to take him outside and beat the crap out of him and then no he starts talking to him and convinces the guy that he's on his side and that uh, society doesn't understand like one of those pitches so he gains the trust of the perp and um, gets permission to take him out and you know the whole time he's lying to him and then the guy helps him set up a, a meeting with a kid and when he does that of course they arrest him and uh, they save the kid and um, the kid says to Caviezel after telling him his horrific story and it is horrific again they handle it well it's not a you don't see anything but it's like you know what's going to happen to the poor guy so he tells him uh, can you save my sister here's her medallion his name's in the movie Tim and he's got like a medallion from St. Timotheo I think and then um so the idea is his sister gave him that to protect him he gives it to him you know find my sister he promises to find his sister so then he goes back to DHS and says um I want to go down to you know and find uh his sister and so they sort of reluctantly give him permission to do a tiny bit of work <laughs> but he goes down there and attempts to set up like a massive sting operation like Epstein Island sting operation literally they get an island and everything and in part of the movie they pull the plug out this is in this this is all second act stuff so second act they have a setback but uh, this is when you introduce the cartel guy who has a great story arc and then um, you know the other guys he's working with them and so they the idea is they're gonna set up like a massive sting where the traffickers are gonna bring in uh, like 50 to 60 victims and then they're gonna scoop them all up and save them all and the hope is the girls gonna be amongst them right so you get the whole sting operation bit but you get it within like a short time so you had the one movie where he catches the first guy the picture guy and then you get the next act which is like another movie where they're setting up like a sting and that feels much like a sting operation for drugs except you know what it is and um, so the big moment the big crisis is they're not going to be able to set it up at all and he has to convince people he has to convince this millionaire to basically freelance the whole event and he does he gives him a picture of the girl and says you know uh, this kid was sold in the sl slavery sex slavery at 11 and um, it it changes his mind and you you could see why so they they do the sting operation they capture all the bad guys including a be ex beauty queen and I think that part is true I think I remember reading that portion of the story that there was an ex-beauty queen that was she was the recruiter horrific anyhow they capture them all and then it for a minute there I'm like is this movie over <laughs> and then um, it goes they don't get his sister the sister so he uh, Tim still wants to find her so they eventually track use the guys they capture to figure out what happened to her and then 
she was sold to uh, the Scorpion, <laughs> which like was a little much, but I, I don't know if that was true or not. But um, he's like in Colombia, part of the rebels, and like he's in an area of Colombia. There's like no way they could get her. The cops are just like, there's no way we could do this. So uh, he goes and says, ah, I'm going to do this anyway, and then goes. Then the whole third act is him saving the, the girl, uh, which, surprise, again, spoilers, he does. And um, that's the big action scene because, like, it's just him. It's only Caviezel against the entire army. If he's caught, he's absolutely screwed. I have to do some reading to see if that actually happened or if he had more backup. Maybe he had a little more backup or uh, something, but, uh, man... Holy F, man. Um, so he saves her. And the girl goes back to her dad and brother. And, uh, you know, and then the movie, the movie bookends with, you know, the initial shot is her playing, like, drums. And then the last shot is her playing her drums. Well, she doesn't have a drum in the beginning, but later she has one. Um, so a lot of subtle moments. So the drum is kind of subtle, too, because in the beginning... She's drumming with her flip-flops. And at the end, the father... Midway through the movie, the father brings a drum into the bedroom. I think he purchased it for her. Like, after the fact, after she was kidnapped. And then later she gets it. So it was almost like the, the father was trying to, like, do something for his daughter. Even though, like, he felt completely helpless. And that scene is excruciating, too. Really, the beginning of the movie is the hardest part. Because they show you actual... I think it's actual footage of kids being uh, ripped right off, off the street, mostly in these third world countries, I believe. Which is why you can't leave your kids alone. Especially little kids. you got to watch them like a hawk. These people are sick, and they are ruthless. Anyhow, that to me was part of the hardest part of the movie, seeing the opening credit sequence. was that I was like, oh my god, this looks like real footage. I think it was. Um, but Caviezel's very good. He, uh, you know, he switches back and forth between befriending the picture guy in the beginning and, you know, it's all an act. He, he's undercover playing rich, drunken American who's a pervert, totally pulls that off. And, um, you know, the end, he just, he, he has to pretend to be a UN doctor in order to get near the rebels and. Uh, steal the girl back. It's just... And then, of course, I knew I was going to get this. The credit roll about the real stats and how awful this is. But then the surprise was the special message from Caviezel saying, this movie was actually made five years ago. And, uh, like, why didn't Disney uh, put it out? Disney. I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't put this movie out. It's perfectly well crafted. It's doing well. It didn't cost that much to make. Uh, this movie has to be money. It has to be. Absolutely. Let's look at the uh, current... I mean, it's $50 million now. And you're telling me this can't get international box office? It has action in it. It takes place mostly internationally. Uh, this, this deserves international release. People would see it. Especially in the countries where it was shot. Because I think they'd be like, what the F is going on here? Um, so I can't imagine this movie won't make $100 million when all is said and done. I can't believe it's not getting an international release. So I think it will eventually. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so... I say go see this if for no other reason than to stick it to the mainstream media that seems to want to like dump on it for some insane reason. I don't know why you would dump on this movie. Um, you know, the the Rolling Stones reaction to this movie is, is scarily uh, uh, weird. Like, why are you so against this movie and why were you so pro cuties? There's nothing wrong with this movie. There's no 
conspiracy theories in it. This is about a real issue and how awful it is. And it's done in a, I think, a pretty good way. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what this does this weekend. Um, I think you're likely to see this hold off at two because I don't think anything else is opening up of any note. Uh, looking at the list here, I mean, Red Door, Insidious, the Red Door might give it a run for its money. I think Indiana Jones is done. Oh, I think it's done. Doneer than done. Elemental, done. Spider-Man, probably done. And Transformers 2. So, yeah, I don't think there's anything that's going to, other than Mission Impossible. I think everybody will go see Mission Impossible, which, will, by the way, will suck away fans from movies like Indiana Jones, Elemental, Spider-Man, Transformers. Um, so, it's, you know... Either you go see a drama or like Sound of Freedom, or you go see Mission Impossible, a popcorn movie. Now, most people will go see Mission Impossible. I think it's going to be a big movie. It's going to be a big hit. Um, I don't think Sound of Freedom could possibly beat it, you know, on second week. That would be insane. Um, uh, and I don't think Insidious can either. I, 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 Insidious is a horror movie. It's okay. But uh, I, w I wouldn't say it has legs because it is part of a franchise. And if you kind of haven't seen the other ones, it's just not that important to you. Um, whereas The Sound of Freedom, you know, it's getting a lot of press. But the people who would say, like, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's some headline like, you got to have brain worms to see this movie or something like that. Just thought, what? It's just a movie. It's just a movie. So I'm glad I saw it. I wanted to support it, and uh, if you want to support it, just go see the damn thing. Uh, if you want to stick it to regular Hollywood, other than Tom Cruise, because I think Tom Cruise is, is at least in the old paradigm that we're used to, um, you know, stick it to Indiana Jones. Go see Sound of Freedom. And that's it for me, Tony D. and Barky Little Joan. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you with more videos later.